the word of the Lord. Raise your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost all across this building, if you would, right now. The King of Glory is in this house. God, we reach for you right now. As you raise your hands, reach for the Lord right now. As you raise your hands, reach for the Lord right now. He's here. He's here to touch. He's here to minister. He's here to strengthen. He's here to deliver. I praise the name of Almighty God. I worship the name of Almighty God. I love the name of Almighty God. I glorify the name of Almighty God. I've learned a long time ago that if I can just get in the presence of the Lord, my focus will change. I've learned a long time ago that if I can just get into the presence of the Lord, my perspective will change. I've learned a long time ago that if I just get in the presence of the Lord and begin to magnify Him, things will begin to look different in my life. Are you thankful for what you feel right now? Are you thankful for the presence of the Lord that's here right now? The unction of the Holy Ghost that's here right now? The glory of the Lord is in this house right now. The touch of God is in this house right now. The King of kings and Lord of lords is in this house right now. Would you raise your hands again and thank Him for what you feel? And thank Him for the touch of the Holy Ghost that's ever present right now. I thank you, Lord. I praise your name today, God. I magnify that name that is above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I praise your name. Without any further ado, I want to go right into the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. I want to dismiss our junior high, senior high class. How many feels better already by just being in his presence in just a few short minutes? So very, very thankful. So very, very thankful. Uh, The Lord is good. The Lord is good. You ready to receive from the Lord this morning? Are you really ready to receive from the Lord this morning? Are you really ready for a touch of God this morning? Are you really ready for God to breathe on you today? I want God to breathe on me today. I not only want him to touch me, but I want him to breathe on me. For you see, when God bent down and created man from the dust of the earth, it wasn't at that moment that it became a living soul. There was a form. But it's when God breathed into him the breath of life, that life came into him. And I believe today in the Holy Ghost that God desires to breathe in us once again a spiritual life like we've never known before in all of our life. I'm tired of being the same. I said, I'm tired of being the same. I'm tired of doing the same old things. I'm not complacent with where I'm at. I, I, I got to move forward. I've, I've got to have more from God. If that's your desire, raise your hands right now and say, God, I got to have more from you. 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 Robo Sate, Yadadadabo Sunday, Yadadadabahaya. He tatata rebeko soto robo sando rebehe sidi, Yadadadabahaya. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, He Alabaha Soto, breathe on your people now. 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 Hallelujah. Psalm. Psalm chapter 37. Psalm chapter 37. Be reading one.
portion of scripture, Psalm chapter 37 and verse 5. Psalm 37 and verse 5. If you're ready for the word of the Lord, shout amen. amen. I thank you, Lord. The word of God says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Sometimes that is very difficult. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust. Sometimes that's very hard. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. By the help of the Lord this morning, I want to bring to you this thought at the 10 o'clock hour, a life of commitment. A life of commitment. Would you lay your Bibles down this morning? Would you raise your hands again? And let's thank him for the power of the Lord that's in this house right now. And thank him for the power that's in the word of God. The truth of the word of God. And that word is going to be delivered today to bring strength and help to some many in this house today. God, I praise you right now. I magnify you right now. I love you right now. I glorify your name. And I thank you for what you're going to do through the preaching and the teaching of the word of God today. I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for the help of God today. I thank you for the strength of God that's going to come to your people this hour. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Everyone shout a life of commitment. God bless you. You may be seated in the name that is above every name. And what is that name? Jesus. Shout it again. Jesus. Shout it again. Jesus. Jesus. Hmm. You feel what I felt when you shouted the name of Jesus? A life of commitment. It is human nature to be risk adverse. Actuaries are people who calculate risks for the insurance agencies. But in our personal lives, all of us are actuaries. We are constantly running cost-benefit analysis in our heads with questions such as, do I do this? What will it cost me? What will I get? What will be the rewards and or consequences of this decision? Should I do that or something else instead? A certain amount of this is normal. We have a word for people without the ability to do this, and that word very well could be reckless. Normal people will take risks to some degree, but they are usually calculated risks, and Dysfunctional people either will not take risk at all or else they take foolish risks without counting the costs and benefits. We live in a society that attempts to manage risk and minimize it wherever possible. The banks are doing this with a thing called FICO scores, credit rating, which helps them decide whether you'll be good for a loan or not. Hyundai some time ago now is offering to allow you to return a car you buy from them if you lose your job and can't make the payments. Most stores have liberal return and exchange policies and offers you see on television usually come with money back guarantees. We understand and know that the extended warranty business is huge. With stores making way more money in the risk management business than they make from whatever product that they sell. If you are unemployed or have been unemployed at one time or be unemployed in the future, the federal government will send you checks for a while 
And you willingly pay into the unemployment fund because you know it's an important part of managing risks. Before you have contractors come to work on your home, what do you do? You get an estimate. Why? Because you are putting a lot of dollars on the line, taking a risk, and getting estimates is a form of risk management. People do the same thing with God. We run a cost-benefit analysis in our heads. Do I do this? Or what will it cost me? What will I get? What will be the rewards and or conditions? Should I do that or something else instead? And they make a commitment to God, but then spend time asking how they can hang on to as much of their old life as possible. Sometimes we go into a relationship with God so weak-willed, so unwilling to build our lives around the commitment that we have made that the commitment itself barely stands a chance from the very beginning and we're going into hedging our bets to begin with and that virtually assures our failure. See, just as trust is the foundation of all functional and healthy relationships, commitment is the breath of them. You must trust someone to be in a relationship with them. But the moment-by-moment moment keeping of your commitment to them is what maintains uh, that trust. Without basic trust, commitments will never be made. If commitments do not get made, trust cannot grow and develop. And this is true in both our human relationships uh, and our relationship with God. Most of us are bed hedgers by nature, and we will bring our hesitation and our risk management maneuvers into our relationship with God. You need to remember something today that our relationship with God, though it's a lot of things, is a relationship. Everyone shout amen. amen. And we will relate to God as if God were a person because that is what uh, we understand and are familiar with. The problem is this, however, is that we will bring all the hang-ups we have in our human relationships into our relationship with God. Why? Because it is a relationship. Let me stop right here and say this this morning, that if you have a hard time trusting people, then very likely you'll have a hard time trusting God. If you take all the time and never let your friends get a word in edgewise, you will go on, no doubt, and in prayer and rarely listen to God. If you had a hard time committing in your human relationships, then it's safe to say that you will struggle uh, to commit in your relationship with God. If you try to control people, you'll try to control God. I know a lot of people that try to control God. Well, God, if you do this, then I'll do that. God, if you bless me in this way, then I'll do this. I understand and know today that no matter how hard you try, you will never control God. It'll never happen. He is the mighty God. I said He is the mighty God. And He'll do whatever it is He wants to do. I've just got to submit myself to Him. You've got to understand and know that if you get angry with people, there's many times you'll get angry with God. If you're hard and calloused and insensitive to people, then you'll be the same with God. If you struggle to let people love and care for you, then most likely you'll struggle to let God love and care for you. You will not, in fact, you cannot respond differently to God than you respond to in your human relationships. Some of you are looking at me very, very strangely right now, but I have scripture for what I'm talking about. For it says in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? I must be right with man, and if I'm right with man, then I'll be right with God. People who struggle to commit in human relationships will struggle to commit to God. I must live a life of commitment. If we desire to have a relationship with God, commitment is as important as any other relationship. Imagine what happens to any human relationship with little or no commitment. And that's what you can expect to happen in a relationship with God where commitment is lacking. Yet relationship with God is one of the only areas where people routinely exempt themselves from the necessity of commitment. There's no human relationship we would ever seriously attempt to sustain without some kind of commitment. Yet people frequently attempt to maintain a relationship with God with very little commitment. We often keep God on the line for our purposes. 
We ignore him when it's convenient. Then beg him to get us out of trouble and blame him when he doesn't act the way we want him to act. We make promises to commit to him when things are bad. But as soon as things are good, once again, we seem somehow to forget those promises that we made to God. For you see, commitment is a word that has lost its meaning lately. You look how fickle people are. We are living in a day and an hour where you have job hoppers, no commitment. We are living in a day and an hour, much more so this day than any other time, that you have your spouse swappers, no commitment. The society that you and I are living in today is a society of the uncommitted. It seems that commitment and dedication is something of the past. Our society will say, I've heard it and you have heard it. They will say, I'll do whatever I want to do whenever I feel like doing it. This erratic pattern even invades our spiritual life. Sure, I'm committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, we say. But also we think, but only as long as it's convenient and comfortable. Let me stop right here and say this this morning, that living for God is not always going to be convenient and comfortable. I've learned that a long time ago. Let me stop right here and say this this morning, that walking with God is not always going to be convenient and comfortable. Having a relationship with God is not always going to be convenient and comfortable. Being committed to God in the manner that we need to be committed is not always going to be convenient and comfortable. There are going to be rough times that's going to come in your life. There are going to be rough times that's going to knock on your door. But you need to make up in your mind and declare, I shall remain committed. Let me go a little further this morning that there are going to be times that I am hated for his namesake, the word of God says that. Not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to agree with you. Not everybody's going to take a stand in the things of God in the manner that you take a stand. But it doesn't matter whether it be a family member. It doesn't matter whether it be a friend. It doesn't matter whether it be a loved one. If you're hated for his namesake, that's the way it's going to be. But I've got to make up in my mind like never before that I shall remain committed. There are going to be times when I may be unemployed. There may be times when I don't have a job in the manner that I need to have a job. And it just seems like I can't rub two pennies together. But God is still caught. And God will make a way where there seemeth to be no way. The key is just remain committed and faithful to God. I've come to tell somebody here today under the anointing of the Holy Ghost that there are going to be times when we're despised and we're going to be rejected. There's going to be times when we are scorned by men and ridiculed by men. But I've come to declare to you, I shall remain committed. Even though I may find myself in a state where I'm being bruised and injured and battered. Anybody ever been there in the day and hour we're living in? There's times where you're bruised, beaten, and battered. But I believe that there's some saints of God that has that mind and the heart and the spirit that says it doesn't matter how bad it may get. It doesn't matter what I have to go through. It doesn't matter what I have to endure. I know that I serve a God that can do anything. And I'm going to remain committed in my Ways, and I'm going to trust also in him and God is going to bring it to pass even though I may find myself wounded there's going to be days where you're wounded anybody ever been there if you've been there raise your hand I'm the first to tell you absolutely if you haven't been you're going to be God ain't going to keep you from that. God is not going to prepare, uh, protect you from that. But God can help you through that. Even though we're wounded. Even though we're hurt. Even though we're offended. Even though we're damaged and distressed. Now's not the time to walk away from the things of God. Now's not the time to walk away from the church. Now's not the time to walk away from your ministry. Now is not the time to walk away from your faithfulness and commitment to Almighty God. 
Now is the time like never before. In the midst of that hurt, in the midst of that offense, and in the midst of that being damaged and distressed, to say, I stand in the ways of God. And I stand in the power of God. I stand in the power of God. And I know that sooner or later, God is going to turn this situation around. Sooner or later, God is going to move on my behalf. Even though I'm at a place where I'm confused and perplexed and confounded, I shall remain committed. Even though my world may feel like it's collapsing around me, I shall remain committed in, in spite of how I feel. It's not about how you feel. I said it a few weeks ago, and I'm going to say it again. I want to drive it into your spirit. It's not about feelings. There's days you don't feel like getting up and going to work, but what do you do? You get up and go to work anyway. Because you know you got to have some money to live. You know you got to work. There's days you don't feel like getting up and cleaning the house. But you want to clean the house because you want to live in a good environment. There's days where, where you don't feel like doing what it is you need to do and coming to the house of God. But you do it anyway. And God is going to bless that faithfulness. I'll be the first to tell you there's some days I don't feel like standing in this pulpit and delivering you the word of God. Oh, pastor, you're pastor. Yes, I am. But I'm as much as flesh as what you are. And I battle the same devils and the same spirits that you have. And I, I'm in this world as much as you are in this world. But I come to tell you there's days I stand in that office and I hold that Bible in my hand and say, God, I know what it is I need to do. And it doesn't matter what is going on in my life. And it doesn't matter what I'm facing. I'm going to stay committed and I'm going to stay faithful. And when you do that, the anointing of God comes on you. When you do that, the blessings of God comes on you. When you do that, the power of God comes on you. God will bless faithfulness. Even though in spite of my emotions and in spite of my situation and what my situation may reveal to me, I shall remain committed in spite of a culture. And in spite of a society that's moving at an unprecedented rate from the things of God. That's moving at an unprecedented rate from the ways of God and the truths of the word of God, I shall remain committed. I believe with everything in me that there are people of God today that are living a life of commitment and dedication and devotion to God in the midst of pressure and in the midst of questioning and in the midst of difficulty and in the midst of a society that wants nothing to do with God and in the midst of what others may think or what others may say or what may happen. They're going to take their rightful place and they're going to stand firm and stand strong in the midst of it all in the day and hour that we are living in and they're going to declare with a resounding voice that they are on the Lord's side. We are living in a day where there's too many churches that are not taking a stand and declaring with a loud voice we are drawing a line and we are on the Lord's side. There's too many churches giving in to the pressures of our society. Can I go there just a little bit? I want to go there whether you want me to or not. There's too many people of God that are giving in to the pressures of our culture and they're bending the rules and they're manipulating the word of God and they're changing the word of God to fit what it is they want it to say instead of their life changing their lives to fit the word of God. I've come to tell you right now that you're a part of a church and you are listening to a pastor that has drawn the line in the sand and we are standing and declaring like never before in an age and a culture and a society that is moving further and further and further away from the things of God. I declare to you today I'm going to stand and declare that God is God and God will never change and his word is the word and his word will never change I am on the Lord's side I've come to tell you today when pressures come I'm on the Lord's side when compromise comes, I'm on the Lord's side. When others are walking away from that which was right and from that which is holy and from that which is godly, I declare I am on the Lord's side. When the voices in our day and hour are encouraging us to ignore the absolute truths of the word of God, I declare to this society and this world, I am on the Lord's side. I am on the Lord's side. Even though living for God according to the word of God. Listen to me, this is happening today. Even though living for God and according to the word of God is deemed old-fashioned. 
Even though living for God according to the word of God in the day and hour we're living in is deemed as out of date. Is deemed primitive. Is deemed unfashionable and too restrictive. I declare to every single person that says that, I am on the Lord's side. I choose to live this way. I said, I choose to live this way. And nobody's making me do it. This is a life I desire to live. And I've come to tell you right now with a life of holiness and godliness and righteousness. This is not this way. is not primitive. This way is, yes, it is old-fashioned. It goes all the way back to the book of Acts and the days of old. But I've come to tell you, it's all right to be old-fashioned. It's all right to live as they lived in the Word of God. It doesn't matter what day I find myself in, I'm committed to God. It doesn't matter what others may say or do, I'm committed to Almighty God. It doesn't matter who may walk away, I'm committed to Almighty God. It doesn't matter what hell and the works of Satan may bring in my life, I'm committed to Almighty God. It doesn't matter how rough the going may, I'm committed to Almighty God. I want you to raise your hands right now and pray. The Lord is speaking to hearts and minds and spirits right now. I know there's frustrations in your life, but remain committed to Almighty God. I know there's trials and tests in your life, but remain committed to Almighty God. I know there's some of you that's suffering difficulty in your life. Remain committed to Almighty God. I know some of you are having difficulty with the things of this world, but remain committed to Almighty God. That's it. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. I gotta give him everything. It doesn't matter what's going on. I've gotta give him everything. It doesn't matter what's happening in my life. This is the way. This is the truth. This is the life. And I give myself over to him unreservedly. I'm committed to the things of God. It doesn't matter how sick I am, I'm committed. It doesn't matter how sick I am, I'm committed. It doesn't matter how. Through it all, I've learned to trust him. Through it all, I've learned to put my faith and confidence in him. you would be hard-pressed to find a better role model for commitment than the Apostle Paul. He spoke of commitment in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 8. I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. When I read through the word of God, the pages of the word of God, which is so profound and and so powerful in my life and has an answer to every situation. Let me stop right here and say this. If you have questions in your life, you can find the answer right here in the word of God. No matter what you're going through, you can find the answer right here in the word of God. And there was a day, there was a day, Brother John, there was a day when I was so sick in my body. 
it started affecting me emotionally and, 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 and mentally. And I said, God, I don't know if I can do this. God, I have not, I have not relinquished my duties in any way, shape, or form. And God, no matter how I was feeling, I stepped into that pulpit and delivered the word of God. And there's still times yet today that I have flare-ups in my body. You know all about it, Sister Stephanie. And say, God, I just, I just have to have some answers. I, I just got to understand what it is I know I need to do. And in prayer on a particular Friday morning, I was praying right there kneeling before Almighty God. And God says, don't forget about Paul. I said, what are you talking about, God? He said, he prayed and sought my face in spite of all that he was going through and remained committed and faithful. And I said, God, what are you talking about? He says, he says don't forget 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And I said, God, help me, help me to understand. And so immediately I got up from where I was at and I went back to my office and grabbed my Bible and turned to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 where it says, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent and in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods and once I was stoned and thrice I suffered shipwreck a night and a day and I have been in the deep. In journeys often, and in perils of water, in perils of robbers, and in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the heathen, and in perils of the city, and in perils of the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. He was willing to give up everything. He was willing to go through anything. He was willing to face anything. He declared nothing can take my love. Nothing can take my devotion. And nothing can take my commitment to him. He was declaring in his heart and mind and spirit, even though I've gone through these things, and even though I have faced these things, and even though these things have came upon me, even though I've cried out to God and say, God, there is a thorn in my flesh. And God, I ask you to remove that thorn in my flesh. And God said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. My grace is sufficient for thee in thy moment of weakness I shall make you strong I understand and know that Paul in reading the word of God says no matter what is happening in my life I put my hand to the plow and I'm not looking back I'm not turning back it will not detour me it will not cause me to throw in the towel it will not cause me to walk away from him it will not cause me to forsake him it will not cause me to question my decision in following him he will was declaring I know sooner or later all that I'm going through uh, and all that I'm facing uh, it will be worth it all uh, and I've come to tell somebody right now uh, everything you're going through uh, and everything you're facing uh, and all the pain and torment uh, it is going to be worth it all because I understand and know that there's going to be a day uh, where there's no more pain there's no more grief uh, there's no more tears and there's no more sorrow I'm reminded of a, of a poem that goes like this and a saying that goes like this. The die has been cast. The decision has been made. I've stepped over the line and I won't look back, let up, slow down, or back away. For I understand and know that my past is redeemed. My present makes sense and my future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living. Sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tamed vision, mundane talking, cheap giving, and dwarf goals. For I have declared I no longer need preeminence. 
prosperity, position, promotion, plaudits, or popularity. I don't have to be right. I don't have to be first. I don't have to be tops. I don't have to be recognized or praised or regarded or rewarded. I now live by faith, lean on his presence, walk with patience, live by prayer, and labor with power. My face is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions are few. And my guide is reliable. And my mission is clear. I cannot be bought. I cannot be bought. I cannot be bought. I cannot be bought. bought. Compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back or deluded or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice. Hesitate in the presence of the adversary. Negotiate at the table of the enemy. Ponder at the pool of popularity or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up. I won't shut up. I won't let up until I stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, and spoken up for the cause of Jesus Christ. I declare I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I declare I must go till he comes. I must declare give till I drop and preach to all I know and work till he stops me. And when he comes for his own, he will have no problem recognizing me for my banner is clear. I'm a part of the fellowship of the unashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've made up in my mind that I am not looking back. I've made up in my mind that I am not pulling out the white flag and calling it quits. I'm committed and dedicated to the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe that, clap your hands and give God praise and magnify and glorify God. Anybody in this house love the Lord? Anybody in this house dedicated to the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ? Anybody in this house made up in their mind? It doesn't matter what mama may do. It doesn't matter what daddy may do. It doesn't matter what this world may do. I've made up in my mind. I am committed and I am faithful to the things of God and the ways of God. And this is my day. This is my hour. And this is my moment. I want you to stand to your feet all across this building at this very moment. I want you to raise your hands all across this building right now. There needs to be something settling in your spirit. Raise your hands and pray right now. There needs to be something settling in your spirit right now. I'm not going to turn back. He will not detour me. I'm I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to walk away from him. I'm not going to forsake him. I I will not question my decision to follow him. It'll be worth it all. 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 I don't know who I'm talking to today, but no doubt it's more than one in this house. It's a few, perhaps many. I know life sometimes gets hard. I know sometimes the road gets rough. And I know sometimes questions arise in our heart and mind and spirit. Why? How? What did I do? Why did this come into my life? Why is this so bad? Why did this happen? Why didn't I see this coming? How did I let this transpire? God, where are you at? God, what are you doing? God, when is this going to stop? God, when am I going to get my breakthrough? God, is this my day? God, is this my hour? God, is this my moment of deliverance?
God, why have I had to go through this for so long? God, why is my prayers not being answered? God, why does it seem like that your ear has turned far from me? And God, why has it seemed like that your hand is removed off of me? God, will this ever end? God, will you hear me once again? God, will weeping last and will joy come in the morning? God, is this really your battle and not mine? God, will you supply my needs? God, will you make a way where there seemeth to be no way? God, will you give me peace which passeth all understanding? I wish I could answer all those questions this morning. But in the midst of all those questions, and in the midst of all of the cloudiness of your day, the greatest thing you can do is say, Lord, I commit my way to you. And God, not only do I commit my way to you, but Lord, I trust you. I trust you today. I trust you today, Lord. You see the end from the beginning. And God, you know what needs to happen in my life. And God, I don't serve you because of what you do for me. But God, I serve you and love you for just simply who you are. I love you and serve you today because you are the great and mighty one. And God, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. The Lord is in this house right now. The hand of the Lord is in this house right now. I want you just to reach over and lay your hand on your neighbor's shoulder all across this building. It is very safe to say today that you are standing beside someone that had many of those questions. And they've asked those just this week. Matter of fact, just, just this morning. But just remain faithful. Just remain faithful. Just remain committed to God. Because God is going to reward you in this life or the life to come. Sooner or later, God is going to reward you. Sooner or later, God is going to provide for you. Sooner or later, God is going to bring it to pass in your life. There's just something about faithfulness. God is going to bless you. God is going to provide for you. That's it, the presence of the Lord is in this house right now. The presence of the Lord is in this house right now. The glory of the Lord is in this house right now. It's going to be worth it all one day. I have stayed. It's going to be worth it all. I have drawn love. With the world. It's going to be worth it all. And the cross before. It's going to be worth it all. Oh, 
sing it to the Lord today. God, no matter what happens in my life, I'm giving I myself to God, I'm drawing a line in the sand. I put my hand to the plow and I'm not looking back. I press towards the mark. It doesn't matter what I face. It doesn't matter what I encounter. It doesn't matter what comes and knocks on my door. I've made my decision. I've made my mind up. My heart is fixed. And my eyes are on the goal that I I'm going to live for God and nothing is going to detour me. I made up my mind. I want you to raise your hand all across this building right now. Come on, you're raising your hand and you're declaring to God right now, God, it doesn't matter. God, it doesn't matter what I face. God, it doesn't matter what I go through. God, it doesn't matter what transpires in my life. God, it doesn't matter the pain, the hurt, the difficulty, the distress. God, it doesn't matter the trials and the tests. God, it doesn't matter whether I understand everything or not. But God, I give myself to you right now. And God, I place myself in your hands right now. That's it. Declare it right now in the name of the Lord. That's it. Raise your hands and declare it to the Lord right now. God wants to know if he can just trust you with what he wants to bring to you. God wants to just know if he can trust you with that miracle that he wants to bring to you. And that anointing that he wants to bring to you, God. I ask it now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Robo 
God, I trust you today. God, I trust you today. God, I trust you today. Put your hands together and give God praise and magnify the Lord. If you're glad the Lord's with you every step of the way, give Him praise and glory. If you made your mind up that you're glad to be a part of the church, clap your hands and give God praise. There's nothing like serving the Lord. I've come to tell somebody everything's going to be all right. God is with you. Everything's going to be all right. The Lord is round about you. Put your hands together like this this morning. 